Yo, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever it is. <laughs> Wherever you are, we are back at it again, back at it again. Welcome to episode two of the Couple School Podcast. Welcome, um, everyone. There we go. There she is. There she is. The lady of the hour, Charmaine Lawrence. Hello. Hey, hey, hey. Here I'm we... looking forward to this one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a juicy subject this week. Juicy subject this week. So we're taking a look at love versus lust. That, the, the two L's, love versus lust. Do you need it? What are each one? How important are they? And what do they all mean? So I'm going to start with this one, Charmaine. Okay, go I'm on. going to take your opinion, Charmaine. What's not, what do you want to know? What's the difference between the two? Um, dun, dun, dun. Mm, one I think is emotional and one I think is physical. Oh, yes. In which yeah. way? Um, so lust for me is like a, it's a, it's a chemistry. It's a physical, well... The reaction is physical. Am I making sense? No, I'm not. The, like, love is very much for me is an emotional thing. Okay. And um, and it's it's kind of how you feel. It's more about the attachment to the person. And for me, lust is more about the sexual connection, the sexual desire that you have for that person. The sexual desire. Listen to those two words. There sexual desire. Um, <laughs> That's where it all gets juicy. The stuff between the sheets. Yeah, there you go that's the difference okay okay i definitely agree i definitely agree mm -hmm. love love for me is is the it's all the other stuff so it's all the bits in between it's the connections between you and events that have gone in your relationship it's the feeling that you have for someone it's the feeling that you have for that person when they're not that person's not there it's the desire the want to 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 take care to to make that person your priority i think if i was going to sum it up nicely mm. to make that person your priority when it comes to the last side of things it's just wanting to tear each other's clothes off throw <laughs> each other around the room swing from the chandeliers wherever it is that floats your boat you know not necessarily just missionary but you know it's 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 that, that lust factor that lust factor now the next next question is how important is lust in a relationship let's say for an argument sake in the beginning in the beginning yeah it's the, one of the most important things. Why? Because I think when, you're, when you meet someone, you first meet someone, it's about the physical attraction that you have. Mm -hmm. And the physical attraction is, if I, like me personally, if I don't feel like I'm physically attracted to you, then we're not going to the next stage, are we? So what, me, not just based on personality? You're destroying no, the myth here. it's a lie. It's a lie. Don't let people lie to you, guys. I've seen it on movies. I've seen it on movies. So ladies guys, say, it's all lying. about personality. It, no. I, felt, I love his personality. No, that's a lie. I mean, okay. So it's possible to love someone for their personality, but do you have the sexual desire? Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm completely on, 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 on your side. For me, look, Karen, it was about her walking on the treadmill and seeing her backside <laughs> move up and down. That was what got my attention in it's the first place. Like, it's all about love. Last. It's the physical. It's always what you see first and the attraction you have to what you see. First and foremost, in my opinion. No, no, no I, I think your opinion is, is universal. I think lust, I think lust plays a, 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 crucial, a crucial aspect, especially at the beginning. Yeah. And also right away through, but we'll get to that bit in a second. Yeah. In the beginning, I think it's crucial because it's all you've got, really. Yeah, I think if, if you're talking about true love, I don't necessarily believe in the context or concept of love at first sight. No. I don't. Um, I, think that, I think that love grows over time. I think love is, is nurtured throughout your timeline as you go through different circumstances and different things and different situations that spark different emotions. That's what gives birth to a love for someone. You know, if we're talking about deep rooted love, the real, the real stuff, not just the, I love the Harry Bows that he brings me in the morning. You know, we're talking about the real kind of, I would throw my life on the line kind of stuff. Yeah. That's, that's, that's not, that's not earned overnight. That's not earned. You know, I think that's even deeper than trust for me. Trust you can get quite quickly. Love comes a little bit after, a little bit after mm -hmm. that. Um, when it comes to lust, that's that animalistic bit right at the beginning that says, you know what, I really, really, really like you. And I really want to do strange things or nice things or funny things or exotic things, whatever it is, whatever it is, it, it, it may be, yeah, you know. Indeed. So what about in the middle point of relationship? So we've got past the we're tearing each other's clothes off every time we see each other. And now we're in the middle of a relationship. How important is lust? It's still, for me, the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I think you can love somebody and you can, like, I know women that love their partner 
but they don't have that sexual desire anymore, but they stay in that relationship because of the love. But for That's me, interesting. it's really important for me to have that physical connection. So let's go back to that sec- back bit a second. Yeah. We're talking, we've got women that are in a relationship, they're in love with the guy, they're not in lust with the guy, so they don't really want the guy sexually anymore. Why are they still there? I don't know. I just think for some, well, I do know, because the conversations that we have Mm -hmm. are very much about security, about worrying about being a certain age and not having somebody and and having to start again and all of that stuff that, you know, the pressure of women to be settled down by a certain time, like, you know, your eggs are getting old or no one's going to want you after this age and so forth and so forth. So I think sometimes women settle because they do love the person and they're connected to them and stuff. But, you know, like, I heard this thing once, yeah? Tell me if you've heard this, right? Mm. That, you know, there's this thing that goes around um, about when people are married, they don't have as much sex. And I'm just like, I don't know what relationships (laughs) this happens in. Because, like, they were like, oh, no, we don't... No, we only have sex, like, once every 10 days. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what do you mean, once every 10 days? Yeah, because we're married. We're married with children. I'm like, really? Okay. Okay, great. You know, but for me, like, that, that, that that's just not... Where's the sexual desire? Where's the lust? We don't have the lust? Well, I, th- I think... <laughs> I think when, when, especially when children come into a relationship, something that's, you have to acknowledge the, tra- the transition. Yeah. And therefore, you have to acknowledge the fact that the effort levels need to amend. When you've got two people that are single and then they get together, yeah. there are no children. So really, truly, you can you can do it whenever you feel like it. Yeah. So when you get up in the morning, you can off you go. Yeah. Like you can fumble whilst you're making a cup of coffee. You can yeah. you know you can do what. It, when you've got a toddler that's looking up at you, and blinking. <laughs> you know it's not so easy like when, when yeah, you wake up in the morning you might have the urge but then there's then your two year old is screaming their heads off I, I, I yeah. get it that is my house right about now trust me yeah. Yeah, I get it you know but I think but you still have the physical connection you still have the lust you still want to jump her bones and she still wants to jump your bones you might not have the time to do it but that whole physical thing is still there the lust is still there but that in order to keep that alive it takes effort yeah and you have to recognise that you know, I think people take lust for granted and they imagine it being this thing that just happens. Yeah. But even in the beginning stages of the relationship, it didn't just happen. Mm. The two of you caught sight of each other. You liked the look of her or he, or she liked the look of him. And then you had effort. You know? Yeah. Whether it be the guy trying to get the girl's attention, the girl trying to get the guy's attention. And then there was still effort when you were going on the dates. You know, I speak to... I speak to couples that I've coached in, in, in the past and we talked to them about um, you know how how they prepare for dates now versus how they prepare for dates when they were at the beginning stages yeah. you know and everyone takes a big sigh of relief when you start talking about sort of, sort of subject because they go are oh, you going there and you're like yeah like when you first got together did you ever 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 go to pick her up and you didn't have a fresh trim <laughs> your car wasn't washed your trainers were clean you know you know, I speak to the ladies. I'm like, ladies, honestly, on that first date, how many dresses did you put on? Yeah. First, how many outfits did you go through? Through how many pairs of jeans did you put on before you realised that that was a perfect one that lifted your backside in there just the right way and it'll catch the right amount of attention. You know what I'm saying? So, and then you rewind, you fast forward that, and you move that into we're in the middle of our relationship now, and all of a sudden we're going in jogging bottoms and we're going in our work clothes, and and that's what I mean is is mm. people forget that your relationship requires requires effort Mm. at all times yeah and you know even down to communication to talk about when you've got when you first get together you're really trying to connect with someone so you're open you're open you're perceptive and you're giving off information because you want that information back and it's just nice even flow then when you get into your relationship two years later down the line and you have a sprog or two, all of a sudden all you're talking about now is the kids and how, who's dropping yeah. them off to nursery, who's picking them up and who's doing the hoovering. That you know? should be banned, by the way. What's that? On date night. On date night, it should always be banned to talk about children. It should be. It should yes. be. But how often do people do it? And that's the query. Yeah. Everyone that I've coached, that's all they do. Yeah. They, they associate date night with going to dinner. Yeah. 
or going to the cinema. The date night wasn't the wasn't the place you were going to. It's the experience that you're having together. Mm. You get it when you're separate, when you're single, you get it. Because you're doing everything you can to make the experience. Like I speak to guys and they're like, how much effort do you put into beginning a relationship first dates? They're like, ah oh, man, yeah, because it was work. Yeah. It was a job. You know, you had to make sure you got all your your hair was done, your clothes yeah. are right, your car was sorted out. Because you're trying to uh, win the person. Yeah, all the yeah. stuff, all the stuff was sorted out, so you're making sure that you ain't getting no awkward text messages. You turn your phone off, you all these bits and pieces. But then all of a sudden when you get together with someone, all the effort stops. Yeah, it does. And it becomes about a functional kind of thing. And I mean you have to make it you have to you have to change that narrative though, because I mean I think it's. I mean, we don't have kids together. We have our kids separately, but we don't have kids together. And it was a decision. We're not going to have kids together. Mm-hmm. So Why? Because we have four, we have this four. Yeah. The house is very busy every other weekend. On top of that, we are very lucky to line up our weekends really well. Yeah. So two weekends out of the month. We don't have any children, yep. and that is our time. That's my time with my girls, and my time with him, and his time with his boys, and his time with me. If we had another child, that child would be at home with us, and their siblings wouldn't be there yep. every every other weekend. It would just be them by themselves with mummy and daddy, and it would just for us. We just didn't think. I didn't think like I would. I would want that. I think mm-hmm. it would just make it a little bit more lonely. I okay. guess. And also, I think where I'm at in my life as well, I was very clear that I didn't want to have any more children. And it just worked out that he has two boys, I have two girls. They come on the same, they're there on the same weekends. We do the whole big family thing. And then they go and I can breathe the following weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and we can have fun. Tied to the house. And I'm like, they, even my oldest daughter's like, I don't think I'm going to go dad's this week. And I'm like, no, 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 you're going to go. Yeah. You're going to go. <laughs> this weekend, you are going to go. So, because we just need that time, and I think I I knew how I know how difficult it can be in relationships when you have young children. Yeah. Um, to make time for each other and to really kind of and you know we're always growing and you have to continue to learn about the new person um, every time they go through a growth phase. And so for me, I just kind of wanted to make sure that I was able to do that. Having another child would take my time away from us as a couple and it would be having to be centered on this, this child that's there lonely by themselves while their siblings are <laughs> <laughs> their other parents house. so yeah I, don't, I mean so for us it was it was a decision that we had to keep that lust going yeah so as you said it is effort yeah so we made specific decisions so that we could do that you see now that there is is amazing it's the power of decisions i'll have to jump on my soapbox and and preach about that every 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 second that i can do but it's it's when you when you when you've got an environment where there are young children involved and everything becomes about the child that's what we're programmed to do but i think for anyone listening out there you need to remember that that's not how your relationship was programmed you know it's not your relationship was programmed about the two of you giving people priority because that's 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 what we get into a relationship for if you were to unpack it all and get rid of all of the holidays and this all the glory stuff and the glossy stuff and whatnot we really what we really got into a relationship to do was to find someone that was going to make us their priority the person that was going to choose us above everybody else the problem you get when you introduce a child to that is by definition, the child's supposed to come first yeah. and therefore becomes the relationship struggle. The amount of guys that I've coached or spoken to that have had issues when they're fine whilst their woman was pregnant. Absolutely fine. Yeah. The minute the kid's born though, however, we've now got withdrawal symptoms. They start to yeah. play up. They start to act up. This and the other. And it's not because they don't find their woman attractive because all of a sudden they're competing in a race that they can't win. Yeah. Because this child, they can't, they can't win, you know, and also they can't hate the child because the child is theirs. <laughs> so you're put in a situation where you are completely powerless. You can't, you can't beat it and you can't defeat it. You yeah. have to just accept it. And sometimes that's quite hard, yeah. you know, and I always I say, this, say this to women, they go like, like when it comes to attention, Mm. and we're still on the subject so I can still talk about this so we're, still, we're still about the t- subject of attention now for women when you guys go out you guys get reaffirmed that you've still got it yeah 
at so many different points throughout the day every day yeah. that builder that wolf whistles that really annoys you but he still wolf whistled at you for some reason the guy that gives you the extra shot of yeah. coffee in your latte the guy that gives you the forgets the, the don't worry about the change darling the guy that's no please get in the cab ahead of me all those little things reaffirm you still got it yeah if you flip the script on that now from a guy's perspective a guy really only gets confirmation that he's, he's still got it for all of the things that will get him into trouble yeah. in his relationship <laughs> So he can't do it. So now all of that focus is coming from one person. Yeah. You. Now, for no fault of your own, when a child is introduced to that relationship, all of your maternal instincts, everything about you says, I've got to take care of this little person. Yeah. So Hubby gets forgotten. I mean, for and some women. It creates a space. You can do. If you're not aware of it. Yeah, you have to make the decision. Like, it's, re- it's, it's actually, it's really important. Like, um, after children, my sex life did not change at all. It was a conscious decision, though. Like, I had to make it a conscious decision. It was on the spreadsheet. <laughs> it, was on the spreadsheet. <laughs> it was a conscious decision. Sorry, I couldn't release decision. it. I couldn't, I couldn't no, reduce, resist true. that. No, it really, for me, it was a conscious decision because I feel like, regardless of what we say, men love physical. I made sure, literally, when I went into the, when I, even when I went to labour, the lady was like, oh my gosh, she's got her nails on her toes, on her hair, done, everything was done. Ladies, because are you listening, please? Are you it listening? was important. I'm, I I'm, like I'm it... speaking for all the guys out here. <laughs> um, uh, sorry, I have to interject because I'm, uh, 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 any guy that's listening right now, grab your woman, like, I'm going to get her to replace, repeat. So grab your woman, put the earphones in her ear for this particular part. Go on, say it again. I was saying, it's really important, it was important for me and I think it's important for women to understand that whether we like it or not, men are physical beings. And therefore, I purposefully, throughout my pregnancy, when I had children, I made sure that my nails was done, my hair was done. I did it all. I made sure everything was done. I even had a wax. I had a bikini wax when I was nine months pregnant. <laughs> literally. And, and I literally did, my sex life didn't change. It really didn't. I made sure, even when I was tired, the only thing was, you know, like these, the boobs were for the baby. That was it. That was the only rule. But everything else is yours. This is yours. I'm doing whatever you want me to do. I, that was me because I felt like it was important to keep that alive. Like, eat, like that's that's just kind of what I, I felt as a woman. It's that essential. It's my responsibility. And I, hope, I know I, so many people are going to disagree with me, but I don't care. That's my truth. I've, I, th- <laughs> I think I think anyone that's disagreeing with you is looking at. Is looking at the situation rather than the challenge, you know. Like when your relationship, if you're, if it, it takes effort, it takes effort on all parts. And let's not forget that, although a situation may have changed, mm. that doesn't mean that the individuals connected to that situation yeah. have changed. You know, as you said, men are very visual creatures. We are built like that in our DNA because that's what keeps the population running. Yeah. You know, without that excitement, like let's face it, like most women, if they've got a headache six is off the cards i don't know any guy any guy and if any of my friends are listening and you disrupt this what i'm about to say we might have problems but i don't know any guy that would use i've got a headache as a reason as to why they spring into action and doing what do what they need to do and i think for for couples out there that right you're you're very very in different stages of your relationship no matter what it is that may be changing in there i don't think i think you can't forget the actual strands of which and constructs that your relationship is made up of at the end of the day like as you said guys are very visual creatures you know uh, we we adore the female female structure and body and what have you how you guys move and the rest of it, it excites and that sparks stuff and you can't forget that relationship and i think that, that what you've just put there is a gem for a lot of women to understand that yeah. they, uh, a lot of the times some of these 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 situations where a guy has gone out and is and, and, and has cheated it's because they're not feeling as wanted as they did mm-hmm. before or they're not feeling as enticed as they did before they still love you to pieces and still want you like no other but because that's even not getting reciprocated or they're not getting the urge or the call from from you it's opened the window to awkward possibility we'll yeah. call it that yeah i agree um I think, not to say that is your fault as a woman. Not at all. Not, not at to all. say that, but it's just kind of like, for me, I just think it's, we have to remember our responsibilities in a relationship. 
And I think sometimes we, as women, sometimes we're like, oh, you know, but I love him, that's enough. Like, you know, I love him, he's here, and I'm making sure the house is clean, and I'm making sure the kid's this, and, and, and we forget what our responsibility is, not just to the child, but also to our partners. And I think that's really, really important. We all have a responsibility to each other, and that's, that's where I always came from. I always came from, I know what it is I need to do. And if we're smart ladies, let's be real, if we're smart, you know, it's only gonna be like ten minutes. Like you, it's just ten minutes of I'm your time. About that. It's ten minutes of your time. You know, ladies, you know. I don't do. I don't. Ten minutes, <laughs> ladies. You know. You know. I don't do quickies. Andrew uh, doesn't know, but you know what you need do to quickies. do. Right? It's ten minutes of your time. Take a paracetamol. You'll be good. It's fine. I think you touched on the word responsibility and I love that word and I love that word for a reason because there's so much power wrapped up in it and that's what I think you need to any lady listening to this right about now that's what I think you need to grasp from is the power to control your relationship in that respect comes from you taking control of the responsibility that you have within that relationship Mm -hmm. to control this aspect if you've got a guy that's there for you that's loving for you that's loving on you and loving around you and also wants you to high heaven then don't (laughs) <laughs> understand the, the, the power that you have despite the circumstances you're going through and I think you have to separate the circumstance from the responsibility yes you might have you might be in a situation with headaches you use that one because it's, it's quite a comical one it's, it's dis- displayed amongst most TV programs that we've, we've grown up watching you know guys trying to make an advance and the woman says I've got a headache and all of a sudden you know he's all forlorn and in the corner but as much as as much as that is a comical situation it's actually a usual response that guy, that sexual urge has not gone anywhere. He's looking at you and he wants you, but he can't have you. You know, the responsibility or the power, should I say, that you've got in that situation to grasp hold of it would be to, you know what, take one for the team, you know? <laughs> Let him in. Take one for the team. You know? The next thing I wanted to talk about really was when you have love, do you still need lust? Mm, it varies from person to person, I guess explain um like i said earlier i think i've spoken to to a few women that don't necessarily need it like some people just don't need the last thing but i don't think that's necessarily both parties so I can't oh 100 percent no yeah <laughs> What, one, one, <laughs> 100 no, no 100 percent. i believe that women can just love a guy and not necessarily some women can love a guy and do everything for him and have that emotional attachment mm-hmm. but not necessarily the mm-hmm. physical i don't think it works the other way around no <laughs> hell no no but definitely women can do it they do it all the time i i, I, I get that women completely. do it all the time 100 percent. but I it doesn't that. always it doesn't well actually i don't know if it ever works the other way around i'm no. not sure <laughs> No, 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 I'm no. I'm just saying. You no, asked no, the question, no. I answered it. No, I, I, For I, some I, women, I, yes. But... I, I get it 100%. And I, I, yeah. I'm not taking anything away from what you're saying. Yeah. And the caliber of what you're saying it and the legitimacy of what you're saying it. But no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. For me, it's a no. But I know there are women out there that will say okay. easily that they love a guy, but they don't necessarily lust after him. I think what everybody needs to to remember in this and i speak this also to the guys as well Mm. that everybody has a role of responsibility in a relationship now for your for the guys out there you need to accept that your woman probably does not have the same sex drive that you have Mm -hmm. probably so she's not ready to go at any given point during the day every day 100 percent of the time whenever like especially once certain circumstances that life gone past we've had a couple of kids this and the other yeah. and, and you know we've got mortgage we've got all these other bits and pieces so that, like you as a guy you're going to have to compromise and understand that you know you're not 20 anymore yeah. and neither is she you know so but also for the ladies listening you also got to understand that the guy is built on those urges yeah and they don't go away Unfortunately I for know. you, they get wor- for for us guys, they get worse <laughs> as we get older. <laughs> Trust I think, me, they intensify. I think the women are going to want me to jump in here and say, "Go on, jump also, in." Also, <laughs> men do need to create a space for women to emotionally 
attach to that se- to get that sexual desire. Oh, 100%. I think sometimes guys, you guys are just ready to go. Okay, right. As soon as your head's like, okay, boy, she looks sexy, you can jump on it just there and then. And not all women can do that. So sometimes I think men just need to be able to create that space as well. So you need to remove her from the the drama that's going around like the mortgage and the, the kids and the yeah, work and yeah. remove her whisk her away do something but at the same time and the same vein ladies if you're listening here um same way you're ex- expecting him to accept that yeah you also need to accept the other and you need to accept the fact that if you've got a man that's truly truly into you into you then there are going to be times when you put on certain things and in, in, in his head, every light goes green. You know? yeah. Every light goes green. And every now and again, you're going to have to let those lights go green and let the cars race. Yeah, I, you know? I agree. You know? I don't have any problems. Not every, <laughs> I, every time can't be a orchestrated, yeah. well thought out, I was going to say diplomatic then, but that's the word, wrong word to use. Everyone can't be this orchestrated, thought out process. Sometimes, you know, it's got to be that I want to rip your clothes off and throw you up against the wall kind of, kind of, kind of scenario. Yeah. And for your guy, in order for both sides to, to, to be happy, you've got to understand and accept the true art of compromise. Yeah. You know? Okay, cool. 100%. How important is it to fancy your partner? 100%. <laughs> 100%. It's like, it's very important. Like, how can you not? Well, I, th- I think it's an input. A reason why I threw it in there because of what you said just now, in terms of there's certain women that you know that, or not that you know that you've spoken to or coached or what have you, yeah. that are in a situation where they love their partner 100, percent but don't necessarily fancy them anymore. Yeah, I, I hear that, but are they really happy in that situation? Are you really happy to be in a relationship where you love someone but you don't actually find them attractive? You don't fancy them, or they're just like. I don't know. Are you really happy or are you settling? I think this is where people's motives for a relationship pop in. Yeah. And I think if, there are some people that will get into a relationship because they've been through some certain situations beforehand where it wasn't secure and security mm. is the top of their list. But I would say that when it comes to a relationship, we all, the, the fundamentals are always the same. Mm. And you do need to fancy a partner. And this is where cheating happens when people settle because of a fear yeah and then when that fear satisfied all of a sudden now the guy at the gym or the girl at the bakery now looks really appealing because actually that sexual attraction you're getting through from them mm. and that's how a lot of cheating happens i think we need to be honest with ourselves when you're stepping into a relationship and and settling is never the best way ne- never the best way in my opinion to yeah. go about it you've Agreed. you've got to look for what you've got to be honest with yourself i mean the vast majority of people that i've spoken to or coached whatever it is, circumstance it is around the way that have found themselves in a situation where they're not happy when you strip it back and go back to the beginning they're not happy because they made the decision based on the previous fear mm. you know they came from a, an abusive relationship so they wanted something that was completely secure so yeah. they went for someone that was not what they want but was what they needed at the time. Yeah. So what they've done is they've, they've, they've made a permanent decision based on a temporary need. Mm. And when that need expires, so when that person has made them feel secure, those lust factors still kick back in and they're going, actually, I still need this. Yeah. You know, I still need that. You know, so I think if we're all honest with each other, really and truly, you do, fancying your partner is a, crucial factor of your relationship I agree. right the way throughout and I think when you're in the middle of it you sometimes have to go find it you know a lot of people I, I speak to a lot of people and you go right well you know the whole song Spice Girls two becomes one mm. I think it's the biggest failure for every relationship out there because people hang on to it oh two becomes one because it sounds nice and yeah. it sounds romantic and dreamy yeah. but what I say to people go look it's not two becomes one it's two people one timeline yeah so it's two people living two independent lives side by side yeah. one in parallel so that's two independent learnings mm. you and I can sit down and watch the same movie and I'll come up with two bits that I take away so will you based on our own experience our own fears mm. our own history Agreed, yeah. and when you're in a relationship it's the same thing and it's going to take effort. It's going to take work to keep that connective tissue alive. Yeah. You know? So where are we on to? Communication. Oh, here we go. Communication of sexual desires. Should we discuss the kinks? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah? Why? Yes, you have to. I mean, no one you wants like you whips to... whips and chains? You, no one wants you to <laughs> pop out whips and chains like five months down the line. Like, you know, like, or 
you've been in a secure relationship two years down and by the way one of my fantasies is that I beat you stupid no like <laughs> you know I like to hold you by your neck <laughs> but, you know I don't know I think for me I think it's important to discuss what you like and what you don't like but then I think also sex is still a taboo subject for many people I don't think people are that comfortable talking about what they like and what they don't like I'm, I'm saying that because I know friends I won't name you guys but I know friends that won't have not said the things that they like and then the guy might do something that they're like oh my god he did it like it's like okay but he should know that you like that why are you waiting like two years down the line to you know just it should just be discussed it should just be out there I completely agree I completely agree I think when it comes to the kinks, the kinks, the kinky side of life, the, fit, the bits that make your cut toes curl, yeah. I think it's all part and parcel. I, I say this to a lot of people, and they, they, they're at the point of relationship where they're, they're at their wits end. They're like, he's just doing this or she's just doing that. I'm like, okay, cool. But did you tell him how to be successful? Yeah. Did you explain to him what was required to be a successful partner? Yeah. And talking about the sexual side of things is 100%. Mm paramount because how do they know to touch you there if you haven't told them to touch you there women don't do it i'm telling you women do not have the conversation like it's to me i'm just like how can you not like you don't even have to have a whole sit down conversation i think you do just in the moment though you can use your words to guide and to make noise when something feels really good that's going to make it like guys listen in that moment oh, of course they do. so if you don't feel comfortable having a sit down conversation in the moment you can guide you can have that conversation you can moan you can groan you can like allow him to see what it is that you like i think you need to get over the t- over the taboo I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm over it. Ladies, you need to get over it. Andrew's talking I do, to you. He's not talking I, to me. Yeah, I, I really think you do. <laughs> and, and the reason why I say it is because this is a partnership. You know, I often refer things back to if you were going for a job or you were going for to start a company, you would investigate each and every layer of that company, every person's responsibility, mm-hmm. what that responsibility is, that's it, in order for it to ensure its success. So if that's if you, that's a job that you're looking to keep for maybe five, ten years, or a company you've got an exit strategy for for ten, well, this is a relationship you're planning on doing for the rest of your life. So why would you not tell the person? if you do this it pleases me yeah and that's the sim. i think people get caught up thinking the conversation needs to be compl- complicated and we need to start talking about whips and dildos and and butt plugs and all those yeah. other bits and pieces you know if sometimes it's just a matter of communicating that you like certain things in a certain way or i like things at a certain pace mm. or i like it when you dress up or i like it when you do this yeah you know the your lust side of things if your a partner understands it to the depths of it if they're truly in your other half and their whole purpose is to make you feel happy and feel make you feel loved and wanted mm. and all the rest of it, that information is only going to enhance that. Agreed. Yeah, tenfold. I agree. Like, I don't, I don't feel like people talk about sex enough, if I'm honest. No. And I think that um, everyone kind of sees someone that they're attracted to and then they like, you know, okay, that, that's it. We're going to go together. We're going to get together. We're going to have sex, blah, blah, blah no conversations happened no it's just, we're just doing this thing and we wait till way down the line to be like well we're not sexually compatible but you're already down the line like oh you know this this we could have done this we could have done that and then it's do you know what it's also it could be a factor you're with someone for two years and then you say actually i'd like you to do this and they're like i don't do that because you didn't have the conversation exactly. in the beginning yeah and it's like something that you really want or something that you really enjoy you know but that person's like i don't do i don't i'm not happy to do that i'm not wanting to partake in that then you're going to always feel now because you're going to focus on that now that's going to be your focus that they're not going to do this yeah then you're dissatisfied it's just like it's pointless we could have had this conversation in the beginning 100 percent. and the thing is if you'd had the conversation in the beginning who knows in the beginning they might have said no to begin with and then worked away well, around to it said, later on down the line let's try it out see exactly what happens that. exactly that um well look we are <laughs> we're out of time we're out of time we're out of, we're out of time, time. Really? it is yeah but it's a it's a juicy subject to, to play i mean when it comes to this whole love versus love sub- subject i think 
in relationships both are required but both have their space yeah. and their place you know and I don't think that lust ever dies and I think the mistake that mo- a lot of people make is they think that one replaces the other when actually it doesn't lust does get the fire going it's the bit that in- ignites everything it, it causes the initial spark and flame and then love is the bit that keeps everything roasting and toasting right the way throughout but if you don't have that spark of lust going throughout if you're not putting that effort to keep that spark alive so to speak then there's no wonder as to why the greed, creep, creepy gremlins creep in and all of a sudden we've got wind in, wind in the cupboards and the, and, and the doors are flapping anyway that's me out for this week this week well that's us for out this week see you later guys no have worries. a good one Precisely. see you on the next episode you stay strong you stay focused and we will see you in the forwards bye peace